There is so much excitement around agrivoltaics. Agri-solar or agrivoltaics are interchangeable phrases. Using solar in combination with farming and agriculture. We're getting dual use out of the land. It's a true synergistic system. You can actually manage the sun as a farm resource. Encompassing the benefits that solar development and agriculture can mutually have for one another. Really what we're doing is harvesting the sun twice. The AgriSolar Clearinghouse is an education, technical assistance, and community engagement hub that's at the center of a network of the leading experts in agrisolar in the country. We are here to help support people that want to do agrisolar in the real world. We've been traveling around for the last two years visiting all of these sites and we've got a following that comes with us around the country now. It's really amazing to see how everybody comes together to make this a real possibility in the world. I love when people hear about it and they see the potential. Across the country, different farmers, different universities, landowners, different solar companies are exploring all sorts of different types of agrivoltaic systems. It's so simple and it goes to our roots. We're using our land to the best that we can. This isn't conceptual anymore. This is in practice, this is real, and it's working. Agrivoltaics is a big thing to be able to see what can be grown, grazed, or raised in and around solar arrays. From the very earliest days, U.S. Solar has been committed to co-benefits on our sites. Here in the upper Midwest, there's been a big effort to install pollinator mixes and native grasses underneath solar sites. This is the Oregon Agrivoltaics Research Facility. My motivation is really to help American family farmers survive and thrive. It's become tougher and tougher for the farms to succeed. It's expensive to run the equipment, expensive for everything. My high-level goal for Jack Solar Garden is to be able to continue making our land economically viable. If it wasn't, then we would have to sell off and move somewhere else. We could have built thousands of houses here, but I knew when I bought it from my grandmother that it's not what she would have wanted. With something like this, it's really helping a farmer use his land in multiple facets. The idea of year-round revenue is something that is really, really important to us. Farming is always, it's a gamble. Solar is a guaranteed income, which is kind of nice to have. We live in such a either-or society right now. Agrivoltaics is a both-and option. When people see that this could be another source of revenue for them, a bit of a passive revenue source, if you will, like they don't have to worry about, oh, is it going to grow well this year in order for me to be able to pay for my farm to stay with my family? We really want to help folks be financially viable and come up with alternative sources of income and alternative sources of ways of making a farm work. This idea of agrivoltaics or agri-solar really is one of these aha moments. There's all this land in between the panel that is just waiting for other productive uses. There's lots of ways to do agri-solar or agrivoltaics. Different farms have different specialties. We're doing ecosystem services and pollinators, as well as pasture grass that can support grazing. From a crop perspective, we see agrivoltaics as growing food crops or specialty crops. Specialty crops are kind of unique in that you can grow a lot of food in a small space. We're growing things you would typically see at a farmer's market. Tomatoes, melons, and squashes. Kales, collards, cabbage, kohlrabi. Radishes, beets arugula, garlic, eggplant, peppers. We're getting better yields and more beautiful plants because we have the protection of the solar panels. Plants actually receive more sunlight than they can deal with by about 30 to 50%, depending on where you are. If you strategically harvest just the light that's in excess, give the plants everything that they still need. Take that what you harvest and sell it as a farm crop. Now you have an extra source of income. What you find is you can see if the panels are facing to the east that the shade is to the west. Over the course of the day that shade cycles throughout the farm. So there's no spot on this land that is full sun or full shade. The hotter temperatures are slightly colder and the coldest temperatures are slightly warmer. So it takes the big variations in the temperature and it smooths it out and the panels and the vegetation together create a microclimate that lowers the temperature and allows the panels to operate more efficiently and generate more electricity. There's a lot of benefit to having the shade close by. 
the temperature really gets to you now that it's pushing 100 degrees on several weeks out of the summer. You've probably seen on the news most of the western U.S has been in a drought for multiple years now. One of the clearest winds is in relation to water resources. When you activate your cooling system as a human, you sweat. Plants are the same, they transpire. That's the name for plant sweat. That shading creates a cooler climate underneath the panel, and that means that the plants have less evapotranspiration. They're using less of their cooling system, so they're using less water. So there's less wasted water that goes to non-productive growth and they are growing melons and other water-dense fruits and vegetables without irrigating. I'm very proud of the fact that we have one of the first really large arrays. It was very interesting learning to work inside the arrays. I want to run my full-size tractors with the equipment I already own. They were designed in such that we had space to maneuver. Planting was thought of, irrigation was thought of. It was designed with vegetables in mind, and also we could put a variety of different animals in for grazing. As far as vegetation maintenance, we've got four-legged lawnmowers in this particular uh, system, and they're working really, really well. <laughs> if you're a sheep farmer, this is something you can do to expand the opportunity for your family farm. We work with our clients who have specific vegetation management goals and we deploy our sheep to meet those goals. Rather than using mowers as we've kind of done previously, we're using sheep more and more across the country to do this work. The other big benefit is the shading that the solar panels provide. From their perspective, they see wide open pasture with shade every 10 or 12 feet. It's actually less stressful on the animals. They get to actually live out their lives as they're kind of meant to in the open on grass with forbs. They nibble this vegetation down in a quiet, peaceful manner. We're getting clean energy. We're getting wholesome grass-fed meat. The grazing of the sheep is actually enriching and benefiting the pollinator habitat. We bring in a huge herd of sheep and that actually reinvigorates the native species, helps with weed control, and helps reduce the thatch. We really want to manage each site to the benefit of the pollinators as much as possible. This work here is really important and we're passionate about it because we have barely 1% left of prairie across the United States. We're currently at a pollinator-friendly utility-scale solar project in South Central Minnesota an important industrial power plant, but also providing this benefit for pollinators. This prairie is so beautiful. If you sit and look around and let yourself slow down, you can see all kinds of stuff. It starts with awareness, knowing that pollinators are in decline. Sites like this are important, especially in heavily agricultural areas because they provide a refuge for native pollinators. Honeybees from local hives are taking advantage of this. We've also seen monarchs, both adult and larval caterpillars, on the milkweed plants that are on the site. It is creating habitat for thousands of species. Manicured landscapes are expensive to maintain. The beautiful thing about pollinator habitats, once established, it requires little maintenance. It's not just pretty flowers, it's a full service ecosystem. And what we're finding is the quality of the vegetation in those undisturbed, wide open prairies is not that different than what we're finding on these solar sites. Land access access to capital, those are the prime issues that a lot of our emerging farmers face. We're looking at some practices that we can use to provide land access for folks who have challenges accessing farmland. There's a lot of solar that's going to be developed as part of our clean energy transition. That's a lot of acres that could be going towards supporting access for these farmers looking to get started. They have the passion to do farming activities, but they don't have land that they can affordably access. A quarter of an acre between rows for a farmer can add up to an incredibly productive plot of land that right now isn't necessarily in use. For farmers, oftentimes when they're leasing land, they're just able to lease one year at a time. If this works really well, then farmers can do 10 year lease or more with the partners that we have. As a solar developer, we're comfortable signing 10, 15, 20, 25 plus year contracts. We're hoping to be able to provide that access to new farmers who are looking to, to make a mark and get going in the industry. Then farmers will have that security to build their business. 
The center of a culture is its food. We do these great farm to table events where we feature agrisolar foods. That is one way that we're trying to build this culture and to bring this community together. Welcome everybody to the AgriSolar Farm to Table. Let's give a big, big, big round of applause for the chefs tonight. These ingredients come from solar farms all across the country. It's just an excellent way to connect. And just celebrating this idea of how this partnership between solar farms and local food can be beneficial to the community. We're trying to stack these different opportunities to see how we can make this truly a hand-in-hand -hand partnership between solar and agriculture. The partnership has really helped with my understanding of the farms that we are either you know, purchasing or buying to create the solar array. It's been a wonderful friendship between the two businesses. They get the need to keep this land in agricultural production. They've chosen to protect that. One of the key areas that we're exploring right now and doing research on is how can we scale up agrivoltaics. I am working with large solar companies that are basically copy-pasting this design. It is 100% a scalable thing. It just depends on the solar developer and the ability for them to create partnerships within their communities to be able to use that land beneath it. There's a wonderful space here where we can all work together and we can do this to the mutual benefit of the land and of energy. There is a possibility to do this in any way that you need to fit your farm or to fit your solar site. You can still keep farming these lands. Families can keep doing what they've been doing for generations and it doesn't have to stop. It does not need to be an either or proposition. We have an opportunity here to actually improve the production of food and improve the generation of energy on the same plot of land. We're helping achieve food sustainability, water sustainability, energy sustainability, a profitable situation pushing us to a more plentiful future. I think we have the solution. AgriSolar Clearinghouse is one of the pioneers in the United States on educating people and providing access to resources for those interested in the different aspects of how solar can be combined with farming. It's been just amazing to build a community that can help each other. Whether you're looking to graze or you're looking to grow crops or you just want to raise bees, whatever it may be, we have people all around the country that are doing this that we can help get the answers that you need. Anyone interested in learning more about agrivoltaic systems, check out AgriSolar Clearinghouse. This looks different in different places, but this can work.